In this episode, we're going to look at how to record better dialogue sound for your film or video project using what is called dual sound or sync sound. Now this is just an example of how I record the sound for my film and video projects usually. And I'm not suggesting this is the only way to do it by any means. It's not the best way to do it necessarily. Although I feel like I can usually get better sound doing this by recording the audio to a dedicated audio recorder separate from the camera. Um, but it does come with a cost. And that cost of course, is that you do have to sync the sound to the video in post when you're editing the video. So that's not a huge deal from my point of view. Here's a video we talked about how to sync previously. Um, so if that's not really your thing, then this isn't really the video for you and I don't wanna waste your time, so you're dismissed. But for all of you that are interested in how to do this type of recording, let's take a look. This is called dual system sound or sync sound. First, I set up my microphone. The way to get the best sound is to get the microphone as close to the person speaking as possible. Usually a boom mic above and pointed down at a 45 degree angle at the person's mouth is my first choice. Lavalier microphones are also very close and can be a good choice as well. By close, I typically mean somewhere in the maybe 30 to 40 centimeters range. For those that uh, reckon in inches, probably like 12, no more than 18 inches. Then of course you run a cable from the mic to the recorder. Now there are different types of cables. XLR cables are balanced, which means that you can do longer runs of cable and still get noise-free audio. Unbalanced cables, such as most 3.5 millimeter cables, are unbalanced. You can use unbalanced cable extensions but try to keep them as short as possible to avoid picking up interference and noise. I usually like to keep unbalanced cables no longer than 20 feet, maybe six meters, or shorter if possible. Every recorder is different, but these are usually the most important settings for the work I do. First of all, turn off any settings like automatic level, auto volume, automatic gain control, AGC. What these do is they try to compensate for changes in the volume of the sound source, person talking, for example, but usually they end up creating more problems than they solve, so it's best generally to turn these off. I almost always set the sample rate to 48 kilohertz for video. I set the bit depth to 24 if it's available, or 16 if it's not available. If your microphone requires power, you need to figure out whether it requires phantom power or plug-in power. Most condenser microphones with XLR connectors need phantom power. This includes most shotgun microphones, large diaphragm condensers, which is very popular amongst the podcasting crowd, and also small diaphragm condenser microphones. In these cases, turn on the phantom power. Most lavalier and some other mics with 3.5 millimeter plugs need plug-in power or bias power. Mics with their own battery generally do not need power from the recorder, and in those cases, it's best to turn the phantom power and the plug-in power settings off. Now, one question I get a lot is, can I convert a 3.5 millimeter plug to XLR to get it into a recorder? And it really depends, and that's probably a bigger conversation than here. Then, once you have everything set up, you set the gain on the recorder. This goes by different names on different recorders, such as gain trim, trim, input level, rec level, or sometimes it's just a knob with a min and max label on it. To set the gain, you have the mic and the person you're recording in place. While they're speaking at the level, they'll be speaking for the recording. Then you turn up the gain until on the peak meters, the loudest speaking parts cause the meter to jump up to around maybe minus 12 to minus 15 decibels. If the peaks are higher than this, there's a pretty good risk that some of the audio will get too loud and it will start to distort, which sounds awful. If you do see that on the peak meter, turn the gain back down until you get the peaks again, around minus 12 to minus 15 dB. Then you're ready to start recording. First, you start the recording on the audio recorder. Sometimes you have to press the record button twice, depending on the recorder. Then you start recording on the camera. Then use a slate or clapperboard, or just clap with your hands. This is important because you'll need this to simplify the process of syncing the audio to the video in post. When you're done recording, stop the camera and the audio recorder. Now, a quick note. The way we set up the recorder, the audio will seem very, very quiet when you play it back. Don't worry, this is intentional so that you don't end up with distorted audio. In post, we'll make it louder. We'll cover this in a future episode. So that's how you set up your recorder, your microphone, and record the dual system sound. Now, if you'd like to learn more, here are a couple of links where we show you how to sync the video to the audio and also how to make the audio much louder in post. And we'll also have a future episode on that. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you get yourself subscribed. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. Thanks everybody, talk to you soon.